Hi everyone, welcome to our session on coding into Data Equity SS. Today we'll be covering tips and tricks for leveraging your coding skills in Data Equity SS, from working in IDEs to version control to custom models and even more. I am Dimitri Labouès, I am Senior Product Manager, I'm based in Paris, and um, I'm working on improving the product with a specific focus on improving the designer and user experience, uh, with a particular focus, specific focus on improving the coding user experience. Hey everyone, my name is Emma Huang and I'm a data scientist with Dataiku here in New York City. I was actually working as a data engineer prior to my work at Dataiku. So when I first came on board, I was really excited to see all of the different coder functionality that was available directly within the UI of Dataiku. So for this demo, we're going to be demonstrating some of the coding integration in Dataiku. So to do this, Dimitri and I are going to demo a sample workflow. In our example, Dimitri and I are collaborating on a project together to predict customer churn. We've already built out some of the initial segmentation models, and Dimitri, as a data engineer, is tasked with retrieving the new unlabeled data to score. Once he adds the data to the project, I'll be able to clean it and create a final churn prediction model. So with that, I'll hand it off to Dimitri. Thanks, Emma. So let's make this that customer data available into Data Equity SS to enable true collaboration so that anyone that has access to this project will be able to work on this data. This data is stored in a third party CRM and I will use an HTTP REST API to retrieve it. To do this, I've already built on my own a generic Python library that is versioning, that is versioned in Git and that is stored on GitHub. By doing so, the same library can be reused across many different projects by other teammates that also need to access data from this CRM, for example. The library handles all the CRM API calls to retrieve a data frame. It also handles the API authentication. And regarding the authentication, I don't want to hard code anything within the library itself. I want to ensure that each user that is going to run the code in the end will be authenticated by a dedicated token so that uh, they will benefit, they will, uh, they will have to face their own user rights within the CRM uh, on the CRM side. Also, I want this library to be generic enough so that each project that can use this library has some freedom to define which set of data they want to use. And so all the users of one specific project will be able to use the, the same data uh, using this, uh, this CRM. So for this, we are going to use two main capabilities of Data Equity DSS. We are going to use user credentials and project variables. But first, let's import this library into Data Equity DSS. To do this, I can copy the URL of the remote repository. I can go back into the Taiku DSS, I can open the libraries section, and I can import a library from Git. I can set the URL, I can check what are the available branches that I can check out. Here I'm going to check out the main branches, and I want to get updated, I want to keep track with what's happening on the main branch, which means each time there is a new commit, I want to be able to refresh and to update the library that is going to be used in this project, depending on the new modifications that are going to be pushed on the remote repository. I want to import the entire repository. So I, will, I won't specify any subfolder here. And uh, I want to store, I want to import this library into the Python folder in that I could DSS. Now I can hit save and retrieve. And within a few seconds, I have my library that has been imported within Dataiku DSS. I can see there is a folder here containing my Python files. And within my Python file that I can browse here, I can see that um, for the authentications, for example, I'm using a function that is defined on this, that is defined in this other file, where I'm using the Dataiku Python API to retrieve a user credential. User credentials are defined on the user profile within the Taiku DSS. So within the interface, within the UI, I can go into my profile. I can go into my account and I will see here that I have defined one credentials, a credential that is called customers with an encrypted and obfuscated value here. 
so that it's my personal token and it will grant me access to the API of the third party CRM. And depending on what I'm allowed to do on the CRM side, I will be able to check out the data I'm interested to retrieve. Going back into the recipe, here I can see here that I'm also using uh, a second time the data eco API, the data Python API to retrieve a custom variable, a custom variable that is called customer's URL. And so this is a way to define within this file that I want to retrieve one specific set of data, one specific type of data from the external, from the third party CRM, which is stored somewhere in this project. It is stored in the variables of this project that I can check, I can define here. So I have defined within this project one variable that is called customer URL. Here is the URL of this uh, data set. And so I can now use my library to retrieve this data set using my own authentication to uh, regarding the CRM um, software, the external software. And I will be able to import that into data eco DSS within the frame. Now that I have my um, library available, it's time to use it. And it's time actually to export the data frame that is written by this library into a real data eco data set so that anyone within my team will be able to collaborate and to work on this. To do that and to have a piece of code that I can reuse and that I can rebuild anytime within uh, my project, I'm going to create a Python recipe. And I will define the output data set. I will call it unlabeled customer because my goal is to retrieve from the CRM customers for which I don't know yet whether they have jumped or not. I'm going to store it into a CSV file uh, that is going to be managed by Data Eco DSS, and I can start creating the recipe. Data Eco DSS has already created a sample code for helping me to get started quickly when prototyping, when, uh, when writing the code recipe. I can see that I have two lines at the bottom that are actually using the Data Eco Python API to write a Python data frame into a Data Eco data set. And uh, I'm going to put my own logic here so that I will put anything I want within this data frame. To do that, uh, I prefer to edit my code within a notebook. So I will convert my recipe into a notebook so that it will be easier for me to prototype what I can do. And I will start prototyping uh, my recipe. So first, we'll import the, I will import the library that I've been importing from GitHub. So from customers API, I will import the client. I can run this cell and now I can try to use to, I can try to use this library. So for example, if I try to see what are the different functions that are available within the within the client, I can hit the tab key of my keyboard and I will get auto completion and I can see that I can get customers which is the function that will actually retrieve the customers from my CRM. Here, once again, I can do some auto-completion. I can see that there is one parameter uh, uh, that I can define, which is with label. I actually don't want the labels because I want the customers for which I don't know the ground truth. I will just check what's going to be returned and if, it's, if it works. Here I am. Let's run this cell and I can see it. I have a data frame that contains 1,800 rows, and I have all the customer data that I'm interested to, to work on. And I can see that, uh, as expected, these are customers, these are rows for which we don't know whether they're going to churn, whether they have churned or not. Okay, uh, my recipe is working, my piece of code is working. Let's convert this notebook back into a recipe. So I will save it back into a recipe so that it's a, it's a piece of code that can be run, that can be triggered anytime. I, uh, each time I want to rebuild this particular part of the data eco flow. And so I now have a data eco data set where I have my data available and for which anyone within my team can continue to work on and collaborate to do more advanced data science. It's time now to, to hand over to Hema 
that will demonstrate how to do some data preparation on top of this. Thank you, Dimitri. So now that Dimitri has uploaded the data into the project, I can go ahead and begin to clean it so we can process the rest of the project. So the first thing I'll wanna do is create a Python recipe to clean the data. And so I've actually already done this process for the previous label data. And I wanna reapply that methodology to the unlabeled customer data. So I wanna clean it in the same way that I've cleaned the label data. I'll start off by creating a Python recipe. And in reality, since we're following the same methodology, I'd probably actually just copy out this Python recipe. But just for the sake of the demo, I, I want to go through and show you exactly what that kind of methodology looks like in practice. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a Python recipe. I'll call it unlabeled customers clean. So I'll create that new data set to write out the, the output of the Python recipe. And like Dimitri showed earlier, when you uh, create this Python recipe, it'll automatically generate some generic code that uses the internal uh, API to read in the data and both write out the data as well. What's really cool about that is that you can actually interact with the uh, data IQ data set data as a pandas data frame using the API. So let's say, let's take it back a step and say that I had actually just copy pasted my code recipe. I might have the wrong input and output for my data IQ data set. Uh, this is a really cool feature that I use all the time, actually. I can actually just directly insert the name of the data IQ data set uh, by clicking insert here. Um, so if I was copying pasting my code, I could actually just rewrite the input and the output by inserting the name here. Another feature that you get here in the UI is you can access the list of column names and the data types alongside with them. So that means you don't have to kind of go back and forth and reference your original data set outside of this recipe. You can just directly reference each column within the recipe itself. So let's say I've like gone in and I've looked at this list of columns. I'm noticing here that there's a space in between each column name. So that's kind of a little, a, a little clunky. It's not necessarily how I'd want to work with my data. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is remove that space from these column names. Since I actually already did this in a prior recipe and I thought, you know, like that, that could be something that I would use again down the line. I went ahead and created a custom code sample. So these code samples allow you to just uh, find kind of a easily repeatable action. Like let's say drop the duplicate records from your data and just immediately plug them into your Python script that you're working on. So in this case, I've created my own custom code sample by just adding my own code sample here. I created it when I created the other Python recipe to clean the labeled data set. The code sample that I created, it's called remove spaces from column names. And essentially from here, I can just go ahead and click the insert and it'll insert this code snippet directly into my script. So rather than going and copy pasting, rewriting it, if I know I'm writing a, a piece of code that can be easily reusable, you can just add it to the code sample and literally like a click of a button to, to add it back into my new Python recipe. Okay, so let's say that, I'm just gonna change the name to uh, DF to make it a little more simple to follow. So let's say that I am not very comfortable coding in the data IQ UI. I'm, I'm really happy with my ID VS code. I use it for everything else. Um, so I want to use it in data IQ as well. So you actually can, in the more recent versions, interact with both VS code and PyCharm and, and just use your ID directly rather than coding in the data IQ interface. Basically, what you can do is Using the data IQ extension in VS Code, I can interact with my Python recipes directly 
through the ID and I, I don't have to code it within the Dataiku UI. So here I have my list of projects. I can just go down and find the project that we're working on, which is this product days coding. And then I can go to my recipes here. So I see here my, my code recipe is compute unlabeled customers clean. So if I just find that recipe. So here we can see that the recipe that I've written in the Dataiku UI is available within my, <clears throat> excuse me, within my ID. So I'm just going to delete this kind of sample code here. And let's say I, I want to create some new columns from, from my ID. In this case, I've, yeah, this is bad practice, but I'm, I've already written out the code and I'll just copy paste it in. So I'm creating two new columns here from an aggregate of some of the previously existing columns in my data frame. Now that I've written out the, these lines of code in my ID, if I just save it, you get a little notification the recipe has been saved. And if I go back to my code recipe here, you can see all of those lines of code that I wrote in my ID are available within the UI. So with that, I'm going to run my clean recipe. I've replaced the spaces in the column names and I've created a, a couple of custom columns here. So if I go back to my flow, I can see my new clean data set. So this is our unlabeled data set. And the first part of our project was to segment each of the customers into kind of a customer segment. So I'm just gonna go ahead, we've already predicted on the labeled data. I'm gonna go ahead and cluster the unlabeled data as well. So this will give us a column output with the uh, customer segment. Okay, so now I've got my unlabeled and labeled data set. Let's say I wanna create a new Python recipe to predict customer churn. I'm gonna to go to our labeled data set and create a new visual ML. Um, so this will allow us to create a machine learning model within the data UI completely in the visual um, interface. I'm just gonna do, so we're predicting on churn and I'm just gonna do a quick prototype. So this is our kind of auto ML. So Dataiku automatically kind of generates some parameters some features. Uh, it, it'll automat automatically handle the features for you. And it'll also automatically just, we're doing a, uh, classification type models. So it'll automatically choose a couple of algorithms to turn on. Let's say I'm not very happy with random forest logistic regression. I want to write my own really cool custom model. I can actually do that here with the add custom Python model. So if I, if I want to write a really bespoke algorithm, something that I know kind of applies some additional business rules uh, for our particular business, I can still train the model within the visual ML, which I think is a really cool feature. Um, so you can train a custom Python model alongside the kind of out of the box sklearn algorithms. So in this case, let's say we, we also get kind of a generated code sample here. Um, let's say I don't wanna use that uh, model, but I do actually just wanna use a uh, Dataiku code sample type algorithm. Um, so let's say we want to do the bagging classifier. Just go ahead and insert that into my custom Python model script. And what's really nice about this is I have a little bit more flexibility to change the parameters. Um, I could add a parameter if I wanted to. I could, let's say, change the number of estimators. And then I can go ahead and train my model. So as the model is training, you get these really nice uh, visual ml features and what's really cool is you can see that we have the um we have the out of the box algorithms training alongside the custom python model so you're still getting all of those features even if you're writing your own bespoke python model and you can see in this case actually my custom python model seems to perform the best so i can just go ahead and deploy that to the flow 
And now I can use that customer Python model to predict on my unseen, unlabeled data that uh, Dimitri was so kind to upload into the project. So I can just go in and predict. And that will give us our final predicted label data set that we can work with from there. So one final thing, let's say that Dimitri and I are working with some coworkers who want to kind of use the model in Python, um, maybe make some updates, retrain it. We have a couple of options where you can either, depending on the algorithm, you can, you can download the model as a PMML, depending on the algorithm or a, a, a variety of other formats where you can go ahead and reuse that model in a, in a Python script. You can also say, I'm going to go back to my custom Python model. You can also export that model as a Jupyter notebook. And from there, data will automatically generate the kind of prior flow or the prior process to create that model. And you can go in and really customize it in code. And, maybe share this to external users um, if they're more interested in kind of a reusable Jupyter notebook. So with that, we've demoed the full kind of workflow of a data engineer and a data scientist working together and our final output of our final score data using a variety of Python uh, steps along the way.